I love my greens, but paying for something that lost half the vitamins before I even reached checkout? Nah. So I built a complete shoebox size farm that live under a pile of notebooks and feed me all years for pennies. It sparked, smoked, survived, and now pumps nutrients straight to my plate. I tasted it, and supermarket greens don't even compete. Hang tight, the corner farm reveal is coming. March. I'm fired up about growing my own food, and the vitamin boost sealed the deal. So I just started and planted them in rock wool and cocoa fiber. Naga brain, no make salapita, aji crystal beetroot, where the boot, Armando pomodoros. Great news, they germinate in days. Bad news, it's still five degrees outside, so I need an indoor fix and fast. Welcome to phase one of a four-part adventure. I'm using a method called DWC, deep water culture. The root sits in a constantly aerated nutrient solution, which makes it a super efficient and low cost way to grow food. For about $5 a month, I grow up to four pounds of greens, just from a 10 gallon tub. That's enough to feed a family every day. Sure, there are other methods, aquaponics with fish, or Kratky, the no pump method I've used before. But Kratky is slower, less consistent and not great for every plant. I've got a busy little corner. Sea anemones for my sea slugs. Jar of phytoplankton for the reef tank. And now, a new tray of greens for me. I planted at least 20 different types from salad, basil, beetroots, Chinese cabbage and my favorites pak choy and arugula. I use rock wool and cocoa fiber, keep everything damp, cover the tray and a few days later they germinate. The seedlings need strong light, I thought about placing them under the phytoplankton lamp but that light isn't powerful enough for both. Placing those trays brought me the idea. I can reuse the frame out of this cheap wood shelf to use that extra space on the top. Especially since I plan to build one of the brightest and most efficient grow lights I can. So after 30 minutes, it was quickly done using some squared angle bracket and wooden screw. But keep it as low as I could to maximize vertical space we only have about 20 inches and I like some coriander and basil. That grows taller than salad. On my local supply furniture website, I found something that could work. An underbed box. And from the dimension, it's a near perfect fit. Like I made that on purpose. It's made of polypropoly. The same as your food container. I have to drill a lot of holes on the lead, about 100, so I can feed those plant baskets. They are commonly used for hydroponics, but I made them with PETG on my 3D printer. I adjusted the size and made it thicker so it's reusable. The cups are roughly 1 inch in diameter, spaced by 2. The extra length lets fresh seedlings reach nutrient solution, reach nutrient solution even as the water level drops mid-cycle. Then I must black out the plastic, otherwise algae will grow from the light. I'm also proud to say that I found this neat idea to check the level, apply some masking tape before painting and peel it while it's fresh. As I'm working on more projects lately, I realize how valuable it is to have a way to turn an idea into something real. Working for most needs and stays affordable. Light is the second most important in this build, right after the water quality. It must be bright and efficient as it will be running up to 16 hours a day. I found this high power and efficient LED. They are affordable but they need a specific circuit to limit the current as the brightness depends on it. 
On the ground is lying my first prototype, using a power supply, the LED driver, and the most important, the microcontroller, that will adjust the brightness, as I'm not sure what they exactly need. Even though it's a prototype, I still have to make a case so I can run the test safely for a few days. At least, that's what I thought. It's printed with a material that can withstand high temperature. The LED finally arrived and I wasn't expecting them to be that small. These holders really simplify the work as you don't need to solder, but just push the wire in the terminal. Based on the power output of the commercial light, I will use three LEDs and dim them down if needed. If you're curious about the diagram and the 3D drawing, I will put a link down below. Monitoring temperature is not only important for safety, but also it changes the efficiency of the light. It's placed right behind the LEDs with thermal paste. I would like to have it running at least for a few days, it's just a test. You might need to add the lens on your light depending on your growing area. For my case, it's alright. It was so bright. The temperature was so high, I think I need a fan. And later on I found the power supply open. Upon further inspection, it has bulged. There was nothing on the component side, nothing was burnt. But on the back of it, this is where it started. Thanks for your help, but now is the time for less temporary solution. A few days later. I need to find a way to attach the fan and the box together. I designed everything around that specific size of screw. I think it was in that drawer. Oh, I found it. Oh, I forgot to order more. Planning is one of the fundamental to manage a project. In my case, I need a variety of screws, a lot, but also mechanical parts, thanks to our sponsor for today's video, JLCMC. They offer way more, aluminium box, extrusion profile, pneumatic fittings, linear rail, bearing, pretty much any mechanical parts. Everything is laid out clearly, with filters for size, type and even stock status, so you don't have to guess what's available. You just browse through, add what you need to the cart, pick a shipping method that fits your project timeline, and that's it. No need to source from 5 different places, everything's arrived in one box and you can get straight back to building without delay. And few days later... The package showed to my house. The best part, I don't have to stock a warehouse of nuts and bolts anymore. It's so convenient, that leaves me free to do what I actually enjoy, building. Grab your coupon, click the link down in the description. The components are all the same except I added a fan so it could run safely during the summer. The fan speed and the brightness are also adjustable on the web interface. The steps you were waiting for. We have to fill those cups. The plants were waiting and they started to get elongated from the bad lighting condition. I found two ways to do that. I split the plant individually and place them in a single cube of rock wool. Or a cheaper alternative that I prefer, using a cotton ball. It pretty much worked the same. The cotton ball is a bit softer, but in those net cups it's fine. The material is just there to hold the plants while it develops the roots, then it doesn't need any substrate. It's a curious feeling to do gardening without having your hand full of dirt, kind of a futuristic way. This is definitely overcrowded, but I will use the excess plant in my other system outdoor. For the nutrient solution, I've been to a hydroponic store. He gave me this. One liter of nutrients, which is called ADN nutrients. It made sense to me to follow the manufacturer recommendation. And since the dosage depends on the volume of the container, 
I used a 13 liter bucket and time how long it took to fill it. Ninja! From there, it's just some quick math to calculate the actual volume and adjust the dose. For this tub, I have to use about 20 milliliter. As per the manufacturer, I had to have about 600. Looks okay to me. Water movement and oxygen are critical for healthy roots. Without enough circulation, plant can suffocate, even in water. I used a 300 liter per hour pump. A bit too much, but they have a nice jacuzzi. I am so grateful for this device. I trusted that pen. But you won't believe what I discovered. It literally saved lives. I was working, but then suddenly... And if you think that's a joke, I actually did it. It works. My plants were going through a lot. The first transfer. And now the nutrient issue. I bought a second tester. I'm not sure what to believe now. So I made some testing solution. This is a reverse osmosis system that I built. It uses pressure to push water through a membrane leaving impurities behind. Using daily supply like precision scale and a beaker, I prepared the testing solution using salt, table salt. You don't need all this fancy equipment, it's just to look more professional. I'm testing the whole range of the sensor, so from 300 to 900 ppm. I am a mess if you weren't sure, even though it's functional, but according to this principle, organizing for me will not bring me more results. Those reference solutions are also a good way for me to test my actual sensor. Trust me, it worked better than these. You agree, right? Nutrients are key, but keeping an eye on pH and temperature really makes the difference. I was able to finalize this prototype while trying to understand what's wrong with the plant. It was a real challenge, but there is more to it. What? We all know that plants consume CO2 to grow, right? For reference, this is the scale used to define air quality. We should be excellent, right? I finalized this unit. It records the value of each sensor every minute, humidity, temperature, pH. During the growing process, the pH should be at around 5.5 to 6.5. What's interesting is to see the nutrients level decreasing. Here the sensor was in the air as the water level dropped till the next refill. Now the most expected results. These are the measures from the last two days. The spikes are when I go check the plant before starting to work. They are in my office or maybe more of a lab. I stay in that area until noon. The CO2 level is oscillating between 500 and 900. On our scales, it's about excellent to fair. You might think, maybe that room is well ventilated. And I will show you. My bedroom is one step away and I'm only there during the night. As for the scale, <coughs> maybe I should switch room. And I'm proud to say that I beat my personal record. Air circulation helps regulate temperature, prevents humidity buildup and ensure plants get a supply of fresh CO2. I then design a simple fan cover. It will prevent any light leak when I try to film a video. The top fan is constantly running, but the exhaust fan is managed by the controller depending on the humidity and temperature. I was afraid that the plant growth was stunned, but from the roots, it looks fine. Now it's time to sit back and enjoy. It grows so fast that instead of harvesting everything at once, I just cut a bit each day for lunch. It's not the most efficient for yield, but it's the only way I can keep up and actually eat it all. 
I'm not sure you paid attention to that, but in my order I had an extra component. It's a circuit board that I made. A fully functional prototype using peristaltic pump that I had on another project. It's fully managing the nutrient solution, adding the liquid fertilizer, pH and even the water. But this is for next time. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.